What's up, y'all? It's Chris. Got a lot of stuff to talk about in less than 11 minutes to do it. So hopefully I can fit everything in. Let's go. First off, if you didn't watch Friday Night Fights last night, make sure you check out the replay. I believe it's uh, next Wednesday night at 11. Antonio Escalante, Mickey Roman fight. Fight of the year so far, in my opinion. Now, granted, it wasn't the most technical battle, but it was an all-out war. Great storyline. I guess they fought his kids. Roman was the bully. Roman was the bully in this fight as well, man. Escalante, definitely the better boxer, better skills, better speed, just um, better defense, even though he got hit with some good shots. But Roman just kept coming forward with nonstop pressure. It reminded me of a poor man's version, a very poor man's version of uh, Julio Cesar Chavez against Meldrick Taylor 1, where one guy was out boxing the hell out of him and lacing him up, but the other guy just kept coming forward and just ripping to him as well, man. But um, awesome fight, man. Just an unbelievable fight. So glad I saw that. Make sure you check that out, though. One of the best slugfests in recent memory. And, you know, great robbery as well. Anyways, moving on. Tomorrow, 2 o'clock Pacific, 5 Eastern. Leave it in the ring radio. Got a special roundtable. Breaking down uh, Manny Pacquiao, Josh Claudi. Scheduled guest to be on. Teddy Atlas, Doug Fisher, Gabriel Montoya, Timothy Bradley, and more. So be sure and check that out. Um, maybe you can get a chance to call in. I don't know, there's going to be a lot of people on, so I don't know how many um, calls we're going to be able to put through, but uh, just make sure you check that out. Next up, next Saturday night, WBC, IBF, Junior Welterweight title, Unification title on HBO. Juan Urongo against Devin Alexander. Got to be honest, not too hyped looking forward to this fight. We haven't had a good fight on HBO since January, or a big fight on HBO since January, and uh, kind of disappointed with the first one that we're going to get. No undercard fights, just this fight being shown. Um... You know, not the most appealing fight. Not a normal HBO fight. I don't know if there was an undercard bout that fell off. I heard Corey Spinks, Cornelius Bunter is going to be on there. Not that that would have been the most exciting fight either. Just style-wise. No disrespect to the fighters, but style-wise, this just isn't the most going to be the most exciting fight. It may be a bit excruciating, in all honesty. But uh, Juan Urango, 22 wins, 2 losses, two, 1 draw, I believe. Um, coming off that TKO win over Randall Bailey on the 11th, exciting fight. Bailey actually knocked Urango down, almost had him out, but Urango got up and... Uh, weathered the storm and ended up taking out Bailey and I think the next round, dope fight. Um, before that, he moved up to welterweight and uh, lost the unanimous decision to Andre Berto, which wasn't the most exciting fight. I thought Berto would have got him out of there, but he never could. Credit the uh, Iron Twin for that one. Devin Alexander, undefeated, 19-0. He's coming off that win of Junior Witter, where Junior Witter retired in the corner after, uh, you know, he was getting out boxed. He wasn't getting humiliated, but he retired. So, Alexander gets the win. Haven't seen much of Alexander. You know, he's a, he's a boxer. He's a slick boxer. You know, doesn't have a lot of pop on his punches. Pretty skillful. Juan Urengo, come forward type of fighter. Doesn't have the most skill, but he has a lot of willpower. Got pretty good power. Um, you know, I don't know. I just think Alexander is going to be able to use his speed and outbox him all night. Unless it's a really, really, really small ring. Um, I think that Jonathan Alexander is just going to be able to dictate the fight. Just move around, not get caught up in the corners. Um, he's just got to avoid getting mi mixing it up. Especially, like I said, don't get caught in the corners. Don't get caught with your back on the ropes where Juan Urengo can rip off big hooks, which he's known for. And Devin Alexander should be all right. I don't know how Alexander's chin is. haven't really got a chance to see. But um, if the fight goes according to the way I think it will, I can see Alexander easily you know, win a unanimous decision in not the most entertaining fight. But um, you never know. Urengo, tough guy, never stops marching forward. If uh, he can uh, work to Alexander's body early, tire him out late, he may be able to stop him. But my final prediction, Alexander by unanimous decision. Moving on. WEC 47, Saturday night, main event, featherweight champion Brian Bowles defending his title against Dominic Cruz. Bowles is coming off the title win over Miguel Torres, where um, knocked Miguel Torres out. Actually, Bowles is undefeated, man. He doesn't have a lot of fights, but he's already got the title, um, beat the best in the division already. Dominic Cruz, only one loss. That loss was to Uriah Faber at featherweight, um, so he moved down here. Actually, this is bantamweight title, my bad. But, um, you know, he looked good in his last fight. A unanimous decision win over Joseph Benavidez, who's actually fighting in the main event. I'll get to that next. But, um, you know, it's hard to pick against the Bulls at this point. I picked against him when, get, picked against him when going against Miguel Torres, but uh, showed the power. Um, he's got pretty good wrestling. He's kind of like uh, Mike Brown. You know, he's very similar, except for the fact that he looks like uh, Marky Mark from the movie Fear. But Mark Wahlberg from the movie Fear, but that's another story. Anyways, Dominic Cruz, he did look good in the about against Joseph Benavidez, but nothing really stood out. He won a unanimous decision, but... um. He didn't dominate Joseph Benavides by any means. And I think at this point, just at this stage, that Brian Bowles is a little bit better than uh, Joseph. So I'm going to go with Bowles here. Um, it, it might come down to the cardio. You know, this is a five-round fight. Um, it may come down to who has the better cardio late. 
because it's probably going to be a pretty damn good war. It's probably going to be a war on the feet. Of course, Bolt's got that power. He showed it against Miguel Torres. Um, he showed it against Leonard Garcia. Or no, that was Mike Brown. See, I'm already confusing these guys. But anyways, um, I gotta play it safe, you know. Dominic Cruz is training hard, well-rounded. So is Bowles, but I'm gonna go with Brian Bowles by technical knockout sometime after the third round. What should be a war of a fight though? Undercard fight: Miguel Torres, Joseph Benavidez. Miguel, as I stated, coming off that loss to Brian Bowles, lost his title, um, first loss in a long time. Just got careless, had Bowles hurt, rushed in, got caught, got stopped. Um, Joseph Benavides, as I said, coming off the DM decision, lost to Dominic Cruz. Joseph has a, he's at a huge height and, um, size advantage to, to Miguel. Same with that, that's also the case in the Dominic Cruz by Bulls fight, but I don't think that'll play as much of a factor in that fight as it will here. I think on the feet, Miguel will be able to outbox him, use his reach. Um, I think he's just better standing with the Muay Thai and stuff. Benavides is probably a better wrestler, and Benavides is pretty good on the ground, but I think Miguel Torres' jiu-jitsu game is much superior. Um, if it goes to the ground... I can see Miguel slipping on a submission. I don't know. Benavides got some pretty good sub-defense, but I can see Miguel catching him in something. Either way, though, i got to go with Miguel Torres to win this fight. I don't know if he'll knock out Benavides. Benavides is a tough kid, but um, I do think the Torres will end up winning this fight. I'm going to say by decision. Um, if you're not on Twitter, though, check out these guys on Twitter, Benavides and Torres. These guys are both pretty damn funny. You know, you don't get a full glimpse of their personality inside the cage all the time. But on Twitter, Joseph Benavides and Miguel Torres, two of the uh, funnier guys on there. Next up, Davides Teravicius against Elsie Davis. Uh, both these guys primarily like put you on your back and work you over. Okay, standing. Okay, submissions. I'm not going to get too much into it. I'm going to go to Elsie Davis by decision because Derevidius, Davidis, I should say, he tends to, he tends to get tired late. Um, I think Elsie uh, Davis is going to get him with that, uh, have the better uh, gas tank, and just have more energy late, and uh, I'll work him to a decision win. Bart Palajewski against Karin Der Derbidian. I'm going to go with Derby Dean here. He's looked better later. He's coming off a big win over, um, I can't recall the name, but um, Palachewski just hasn't looked that good since coming to the WEC. So I'm going to go with Derby Dean here by TKO. Jens Paul for Javier Vasquez. Good fight. Um, probably would have been better if this fight would have happened 5, 10 years ago, but uh, it is what it is. Loser is probably going to be retired, honestly. Pulver is much better standing. Javier is much better on the ground with the Jiu-Jitsu. Um, Jens is on the decline. So is Javier, but Jens just hasn't looked as well lately. Oh, boy, man. This is a tough fight to call. I don't know how much Jens has left. If it stays standing, I think Jens will definitely get the better of it. I don't think Javier's got the power to hurt Jens, even though Jens' chin has looked pretty suspect lately. But if it hits the ground, man, um, Jens might be in a world of trouble. Javier is an absolute wizard on the ground. I think eventually it will hit the ground. Even though Jens is a better wrestler, I'm going to go with Javier Vasquez by submission. But don't be surprised if Jens ends up catching him and knocking him out and makes me look like a fool. Uh, undercard fights, real quick. Uh, I got Scott Jorgensen winning by uh, TK over Chad George. I got Danny Castillo over Anthony Pettis by stoppage. I got Leonard Garcia over George Root by stoppage. And I got the debuting Chad Mendez over Eric Koch. Mendez coming out of uh, Team Alpha Male, Uriah Favors Camp out of here, Sacramento, California, where I stay. A um, lot of buzz coming into this. Uh, Coming into the WEC, Chad Mendez, young fighter, just starting his career, but um, I heard good things about him. He's got a good uh, wrestling credentials background, so we'll see. Should be a good event, though. I'm definitely looking forward to uh, the WEC more so than the HBO boxing card next week. Anyways, that's it for now. Be sure to check out the websites. There will be bloodfightshow.com, leaveitinthering.com, my Twitter if you're interested. I'll put the links in the information part, as always. Be sure to check out the roundtable tomorrow. Um, like I said, 2 o'clock Pacific, 5 Eastern. Um, and yeah, that's pretty much it, man. Until next Sunday, I'm out.